all of that. We're discussing the top stories, making the headlines. Nick is down the line and we're joined by Ashley as well. Good morning to both Hi, of you. Uh, Nick's Good coming to see you. Uh, later on. I was just a bit too scared to be here in person, Ashley. Yeah, I was going to uh, say, Nick, are you scared <laughs> to be here in person after last this week? This is your fault, Ashley. Uh, it's your fault. Uh, uh, listen, let's kick off with the first story and it's pretty awful. Anti-Semitism in Britain is at a 40-year high. It's reached its highest level for more than 40 years with more than 4,000 anti-Semitic incidents being recorded in the UK by the Jewish charity in 2013. It found such incidents in and around British schools have more than tripled since um, um, last year, with many Jewish schools having to increase security since last October. Nick, uh, let's kick off with you. This is just a pretty stark and awful statistic, isn't it? It's horrific. It's put together by the CST, the Community <coughs> Security Trust, which is a charity that looks after Jewish people in their schools, in their synagogues, in their homes and whatever else. As you rightly reference, it's the highest figure for some 40 years. Let's be candid. The situation in the Middle East allows some people to come forward. It's a camouflage. It's a cover for them to come forward with their vile views. And it doesn't matter whether there are students on campuses of university or colleges or elderly people in their homes or even, interesting enough, an MP. These are the people who are being threatened. Now, to the story of the MP, this is a... He doesn't happen to be Jewish. He's a Conservative MP who has served in the Defence Ministry and he had more than 100 pro-Palestinian demonstrators outside his house on Monday. And this is where I think the problem lies, Derma, Alison, uh, for me anyway. When we have situations like this, of course you are allowed a peaceful protest. But in Bournemouth, that went on for four hours wow. and neighbours were trying to get their children to sleep. Their children were obviously frightened and the police said they wanted to make sure that legal protest was allowed. We also have the case which is now being investigated of a judge who allowed three people who were caught up in the pro-Palestinian demonstrations with various emblems on their backs. They walked free from court, having been convicted of a terror offence. So my message would be to lawmakers and those who are tasked with upholding the law, if this is to be tackled, where you have potential cases of anti-Semitism or terrorist behaviour, I think we need to see some proper sentencing. Otherwise, sadly, I don't see this coming to an end. What are your thoughts, actually? I mean, it's obviously really shocking, but actually I don't think it's very surprising. I know all my Jewish friends are terrified and... It just seems crazy, doesn't it? I remember going to visit, uh, you know, going on history trips when I was younger and thinking like anti Semitism was a thing of the past yeah. and we'd never live to see it again. Um, I also um, think it's worth mentioning that there was a report that came out in December that um, Islamophobia is up 600%. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, it's just unconceivable that any individual would be hated for actions of governments in other parts of the world. So, um, yeah, based on their own religion. Yeah. Absolutely. And their own race. So, it's yeah, this is incredible conflation, Nick, between um, the actions of Israel or even Netanyahu, which, you know, you, you, you know, I was watching two nights ago, families of the hostages condemning Netanyahu and this conflation between that and being Jewish. It's worth knowing that if you were to have a poll in Israel now or an election, it's highly unlikely that Benjamin Netanyahu would actually win as prime minister. There are plenty of Israelis, there are plenty of Jews living in this country who have real issues with Netanyahu and some issues with the way Israel has behaved as well. Not every single Jewish person living in this country is in whole support of what the IDF, the Israeli Defence Forces, is doing. But to Ashley's point, to be picked out because of your religion, whether it be because you're Muslim or whether it be because you happen to be Jewish, in a country such as Britain, a developed nation, in 2024, we have the worst now of anti-Semitism in four decades. Action needs to be taken. And I address you again, Dermot. You'll hear the Prime Minister and other politicians, we will not tolerate this. Action needs to be done. Well, let's get the police starting to nick people. On both sides, by the way, if there are Muslims who are fe feeling terror, and let's get some people put through the courts. That's the message that has to go out. OK, we're going on to another story now. This is new research suggesting that restrictive uniforms could be preventing primary school pupils, especially girls, from not being physically active. In some countries where most uh, schools require students to wear uniforms, fewer young people reach the World Health Organization's minimum recommendation of 60 minutes of physical activity due to the clothes that, that they're wearing. What do you think about that? Yeah, this is really sad, isn't it? Because it kind of shows that sexism starts right at the beginning. This is primary school kids were talking about. So the idea being that because girls are in skirts or dresses, they might not do cartwheels yeah. or running around the playground. But I think it also stems back to it's teaching girls from a really young age that 
what they wear or their bodies need to be covered up. You know, we always hear, like, your, your skirt's too short. We're still not teaching boys maybe not to look up girl skirts as they're walking upstairs. Um, but I think it's such a simple solution, whether it's like, change the uniform or make shorts and trousers available for girls, because it does show that uniform is holding girls back from thriving, because if boys are being able to exercise, not only does that help their health, it also might push them to go, you know, to take sports seriously in, later in life. Mm. Um, yeah, so I think this is just really sad and hopefully um, they take note of this and can change uniforms. It seems quite a simple policy to be able to change. Uh, there's also issues with regards to the NHS uniform. The uniform is also... The union is also calling for urgent changes to the outfit worn by health service workers, saying that it's too thick, sweaty, uncomfortable for women going through many pores and stuff like that. What do you think about that, Nick? Well, Alison Durbin, if I just refer you back to the school conversation, you won't be surprised here. I was a regular cartwheeler at school. As I, <laughs> as I, as I went through the gates, I remember cartwheeling my way to my A-levels and enjoying them with great success. And often when I arrive at the radio studio, I have to do a couple of quick cartwheels before I'm ready to talk I to the Prime you Minister. you did do cartwheels, and I bet you did handstands as well. Nimble. On, I imagine he's very nimble. I, I, Alison, I was a bit of a rugby boy. I, I don't was think you? I was ever able to cartwheel, to be honest with you. But, no, look, uh, in all seriousness, uh, let's go to the NHS staff. If something can be done, dear God, these people work hard enough. If, if some changes can be made to their uniforms, their costumes, their gowns, or whatever, of course we should be doing it. This is part of evolution, allowing people in their workplace to be properly looked after, whether it's emotionally, physically, or with uniform. I can't see an argument against it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, especially when 77% of the NHS workforce are women and a third over 55, so... Oh, sorry, over 50, so I feel like it's, again, it's a no-brainer, no right? Isn't it? Us menopausal women need help, don't we? We definitely need help. We just help. want people, especially people that work in our behalf, to be like, given looked as much after. equipment as looked yeah. after as possible. If that involves them wearing like lighter body clothing, yeah. well, it's just, just, do just it. seems... Exactly. Yeah. Um, I mean, this is an interesting one. I don't know how... What well, your take on this is, if the genie can be put back in the bottle, but should smartphones be banned for under 16s? More people are getting behind calls for smartphones to be banned. Uh, Action campaigner Sophie Winkleman said school children should be given a brick phone instead of smartphones to protect them from social media. She said there are any downsides to children having access to TikTok. Brianna Jay's uh, mum was on GMB yesterday talking about it. Let's take a quick look at that. And I think that when you're scrolling through Instagram, even as an adult, if you're seeing mm -hmm. perfect, perfect lives and airbrush bodies, that makes you feel, it, it makes you as an adult feel mm -hmm. bad. So the impact that that's going to have on children, I'd like to introduce mindfulness into all schools in England um, to help build mental fitness in young people, build uh, mental resilience and empathy and self-compassion. My apologies, that was today, Bernie Jai's mother. And Dame uh, Rachel D'Souza said a ban on children having phones is unlikely. However, more can be done to promote phones uh, that are safe by design. Ashley, what's your take? Yeah, I mean, I couldn't agree with Esther more. I think she speaks sense. We all know the impact of social media, comparison culture. Um, I think there's been loads of studies that it, it is affecting boys and girls, their body image, the way they look at their, their faces, you know, filters. There's all these um, face-enhancing filters. I can't imagine going through that as a child, you know, I, I th well, we didn't have smartphones when I was when I was young, but I remember getting my first phone. Um, I actually had a pager first. That put, you and I remember my brother saying, "Just sorry, guys, I've, you get a mobile phone." I was my like, uh, my mum's calling. I just need to call her. But it was so weird having a pager. I was like, I won't want a mobile phone. I did want a mobile phone, but yeah, it, it, it it's. I, yeah, I mean, I say bring back the brick phones for school kids because obviously there is a case for people need to get in touch. Um, although, even with the brick phone, I, I, I remember trying to play snake under the table. It's always snake. That was my just favourite, a distraction, always favourite snake. game. And Tetris. It was always Tetris snake, yeah. is so good. But what can be done? That's the thing. I mean, it's like because the, the genie's out of the bottle, so how do you go back, Nick? Well, beware of introducing laws that are virtually impossible to enforce because, of course, it makes sense. What Ashley said, it absolutely makes sense. But we shouldn't really have teenage, uh, uh, underage teenagers able to vape or to drink or to smoke or to take drugs, but we all know they do. Now, whether you could look at something within a school whereby when each class starts, when each day starts, I'm sorry, you hand in your mobile phone and it's kept by the teacher and you only get it at break time, is that to look there? But there's an interesting article just to mention in the Daily Telegraph today, an interview with Sophia Winkleman, who's the actress and campaigner in this area. She's actually taken her children out of a couple of schools because they're exposed to too much on iPads and too much on screens. And she has real concerns about our children not just through their cell phone, mobile phones, but also through iPhones, just having too much screen time. 
On your point, Nick, I guess like we do live in a digital age now, so maybe actually the answer isn't to ban smartphones, but maybe teach people how better to use them and how to protect themselves online. Yeah. Uh, just yeah, taking a moment, sure. that Nick it's... and Ashley have just agreed on something. Sorry. I know, it doesn't happen often. <laughs> <laughs> maybe he'll be back in the there. studio next Whoa. week.